Good afternoon, and thank you for joining me on this beautiful sunny Saturday to talk about the COVID-19 pandemic here in Erie County. Today, I'm reporting that we have three new positive cases of COVID-19 in Erie County, which brings us to a total of 56 confirmed positives, 1,271 negatives. We are aware that if you look on the state's website, they are reporting Erie County with 58 cases, but that is because the state has now decided to add in probable cases. It's also important to note that the state pulls their numbers at midnight and then reports them on their website at noon. Therefore, the Erie County Department of Health is working through the data right now and communicating with the state. I share this with you uh, from what I know at this point, and by early next week, we expect our numbers to be better aligned with the states. Now, probable cases are essentially confirmed positives. They are people who are symptomatic and are a direct contact of a known positive. However, they were never tested. The standard for them not to be tested was determined and continues to be determined by CDC guidelines. So we hope to bring you some clarification uh, by Monday on these numbers, but an example of a probable case would be if a spouse is one of our known positives and their spouse becomes sick with the symptoms of COVID-19, um, often they're told you don't need to go get tested, but you are a probable case. So I just wanted to explain that a little bit more. In the meantime, with these three new cases that are confirmed today, one case is in their early teens, one is in their 40s, and one is in their 60s. One of these cases is a direct contact to a known positive, and the investigations are underway on the others. Contact tracing, as always, continues by Erie County Department of Health. We now have 29 recovered cases to date. So that means we have 27 confirmed active cases today. Most important, we know that COVID-19 is here in Erie County, and I will remind all of you that the best practice is to act as if everyone you come in contact with has it. The state numbers have now exceeded 30,000. They're at 31,069 and the deaths are at 836. That is a 1,628 new cases and 80 new deaths recorded in the past 24 hours. Crawford County remains at 16 positives with 543 negatives. McKean County is four positives with 122 negatives and Warren County is one positive with 130 negatives. Chautauqua County has 27 cases and three deaths, and Ashtabula has 54 cases and four deaths. So I ask all of you to continue to do your part to slow the spread of COVID-19 here in Erie County. Continue your physical distancing uh, from anyone who does not live in your home. Continue to wash your hands regularly for at least 20 seconds and sanitize and disinfect the surfaces that you touch and continue to wear a mask. You can find information about masks under resources at the COVID-19 page of eriecountypa.gov. Now remember, uh, two days ago, I showed you the t-shirt mask I made. It is truly the simplest one I have found. So you just take a t-shirt, this would be the side where it was folded. You cut basically a U-shape in the t-shirt, and then you cut holes at the, sh at the smaller end. And then when you open it up, you take this t-shirt and you just twist where you put it over your ear. And then you twist the other side and you can wear this. So when you're wearing a mask, what we are looking for is some kind of barrier between any moisture that would come out of your nose or your mouth and anyone else you would be around. And remember that your mask is protecting them and your mask protects me or anyone else you're around. So my mask protects you, your mask protects me. So please know 
that we need everyone to be wearing a mask, whether you're um, going to work or whether you're going into a store to purchase groceries or other life-sustaining items, everyone needs to be wearing a mask. The enforcement team at the health department continues to do field visits to help life-sustaining businesses and organizations be in compliance. And with the help of the enforcement team, I really do believe the citizens of Erie County can prove that we can get back to normal and we can get back to work by following the proper guidelines. And in fact, today, there was a farm auction in Wattsburg. And that uh, entity was given a waiver by the state that allowed them to continue with that farm equipment auction. They were in contact with our enforcement team during this week. They had a plan all laid out about how they were going to follow the guidelines. Today, my staff from the health department, the enforcement team went down and they were very um, satisfied with all of the precautions that have been taken by this farm auction. And so they are an example of how um, actually a fair number of people, I guess there was close to 200 people there, how they could come together safely to do business. Um, one of the great things is they had about 300 people online for that auction. And that auction normally brings like five, six, 700 people, I guess, together. So they were able to drop the numbers significantly by having an online presence. And then they kept people six feet apart, of course, unless they were from the same household. So a spouse or a father, son, or whoever uh, lives in the household could be closer, but everyone else stayed apart. They had announcements over their loudspeakers throughout that hand washing stations with plenty of uh, soap and paper towels and everything else that was needed. Uh, my understanding, even to the point of a pen, if someone is going to use a pen, it was a one-time use, and then that pen, I think the person probably took it with them or it was thrown away. So they really worked hard to comply with the guidance that's out there. Everyone was wearing a mask. If you didn't have a mask, they had some masks there that you could purchase. So we are thankful that uh, they, uh, those who ran this farm auction, really did work hard with us. That's what we're here to do in Erie County uh, government through our health department is to work with businesses and help you comply. So once again, if any business or any individual needs more uh, information about the guidance on mass or just so many resources we've been talking about for these weeks, please go to eriecountypa.gov and find that information. And you can always call us at 451-6700 um, or email us at ecdhinfo at eriecountypa.gov. And I'd finally like to just remind you that you should only call 911 for an emergency, such as difficulty breathing, an allergic reaction, symptoms of a heart attack, if you're feeling dizzy or disoriented, if you're having difficulty speaking or walking or seeing, or if you have any sudden severe pain, or of course, any other emergency that might occur. Uh, please only call 911 for those types of emergencies. If there's other things related to COVID-19 that you're concerned about or you have questions about, please call the number 451-6700. On the weekends, uh, most likely you will get a recording, but we are monitoring that uh, number and someone will get back to you. Uh, whether it's uh, earlier than Monday would be if it was more of an emergency situation or Monday uh, if it was not. And last, I uh, just want to thank the telecommunicators again, our first first responders for all they do for us every single day, but particularly during this time of COVID-19. And with that, I'm going to open it up to the media for questions. And Talk Erie, um, I'll let you go first today. Yes, good afternoon, uh, Kathy. It's Joel Natale. Thanks for the uh, for uh, at, let me ask a question here. It's this is from a Talk Erie listener. Um, they had a question about if you uh, are have been quarantined after uh, a positive of COVID-19. Is there a second test that you get before you're uh, are, are supposed to go out back into the public? Because uh, yeah, there you know there's reporting of people even after the two weeks still having uh, COVID in them. How's that working? So uh, the guidelines still are 14 days. So we ask people to quarantine for 14 days. You may never become symptomatic during that time. You may have never um, cont contracted COVID-19 from the person who you were in contact with, or you might be one of those asymptomatic people. Or of course, there are some people who do get symptoms in those 14 days, and then we know that they are a positive. Some of those people are getting tested. 
and as I mentioned, those probables, some have not. Um, but when you are done with your 14 days of quarantine, you are then permitted to go back out, uh, whether it be to work, if you're in a life-sustaining business, or back uh, out to go to the store, for example, and get groceries. Uh, but again, wear a mask, like we're asking everyone to do. Wear a mask and follow all those other guidelines, keeping yourself six feet away from anyone else and um, washing hands frequently um, and all the other guidelines we give. Just a quick clarification. Mm -hmm. So if you were a known positive, you do your two-week quarantine, uh, then you're free and clear? Or do you, uh, the, the question was, uh, is there another test that needs to happen? Because what they were finding is people are uh, – are still positive even after two weeks. Well, I'm not sure where they're seeing that people are still positive after two weeks because um, we don't actually even tell the positives they have to be quarantined for 14 days. We tell them they have to be, so there's a difference. Isolation is what we tell the people who are positive. So if you are positive, you're told to go into isolation, which means you're by yourself, uh, have your own bathroom, have your own room to stay in, and that you must stay there until 72 hours after your last symptom. So for some people, that might be less than four days. But for some people, that might be longer than 14 days. So however long you have those symptoms, you know, the fever and the cough and, and all of the symptoms that you, were, you will be explained um, about when you are shown as positive. So maybe they're speaking of some of those people, and maybe they have gone longer than 14 days with symptoms. So they need to wait until they are 72 hours completely symptom-free before they, again, kind of join society the way we all are joining society right now with restrictions. I hope that helps to clarify that. The quarantine Appreciate people, it. Thank you. Yeah, the quarantine people are those who we know had a connection to a known positive, and we ask those people 14 days quarantine, uh, and if you don't have any symptoms after those 14 days, then you uh, can go and, again, join society, uh, as we all are. But let's just take a person who's in 14-day quarantine, and then maybe on day 12, they start to have symptoms. Um, most likely, they would go get tested, because now there's more testing available. Uh, if they're positive, then they would be also told, stay in isolation, and then once you're 72 hours past symptoms, then you can come back. Um, so that it might be even longer, you know, because they didn't get um, any symptoms of COVID-19 until maybe 12 days after they were exposed. And that can happen. So there's a lot of variables. And those people who are in those situations have been contacted uh, by their health care provider, have been contacted by the health department uh, staff, and they should have that number that they can always call if they have questions and they're not really sure where they, sh where they stand at that point. So that would be the best thing is for them to reach back out to the health department and or their health care provider. Jet TV. Hi, Kathy, it's Samir. So about how many people has uh, the county now asked to go into isolation specifically? The isolation would be the 56 confirmed cases. Okay, and then have you guys had to house uh, how many people have you guys had to like house in special quarantine or isolation? So we only have a few people, a handful of people that we've had to um, ourselves quarantine. Um, and it's again because somebody doesn't have the capability where they live to be separated from everyone else. And so we have the ability to provide that for them if they don't have that ability themselves. So then are you utilizing any uh, special areas like colleges or anything like that? We have a place uh, for them, but I'm not going to reveal where that is. But it is a place where they have their own room and their own bathroom. Erie Times News. Yeah, Kathy, this is Matthew Rink calling. Um, I wanted to ask you this. Pennsylvania Department of Health uh, appears to be reporting a, uh, a second case out of Erie County uh, of someone, a, a resident of a long-term care facility or uh, personal care facility. Uh, I wanted to see if you could shed any light on that. Is that person part of the three new cases? Are they part of the two probable cases now being reported? Are they, um, you know, part of a, a previously reported case? Can you just speak to that? So we do know that um, one of our new cases has a connection 
to one of our long-term um, residents, uh, basically nursing homes. We don't know whether that person is a resident or an employee yet, or at least I didn't prior to my last conversation with my staff. They are doing um, all of the work on that and trying to, trying to um, dig down into that. I will let you know that um, any nursing home who does have any cases, whether it be a uh, resident who lives there or their staffing, then that nursing home is responsible for doing the contact tracing for their, uh, whether it be an employee or uh, a resident. Okay, very mm -hmm. good, thank you. Sure. Uh, Erie News Now. Hi, Kathy, this is Jonathan Skinner. Um, how, how are you all sort of recommending stores sort of enforce that mask mandate that starts tomorrow? And will the county be providing any support for enforcement of the, uh, the mandate? So it begins at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Of course, it's already in effect, but the actual enforcement begins at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. And, you know, we have told all of our businesses to have a plan, have a, have a written plan of how you're going to follow the guidelines, because the guidelines are, are more than just wearing a mask. It's that they should be um, temper, temperature checking every employee who comes in. Um, and there's a number of other regulations that uh, are laid out and they're on our website at eriecountypa.gov. And so the mask thing is probably maybe um, the most concerning for some, although I think right now even the temperature piece is concerning because we're asking them to have one of those infrared uh, temperature thermometers that um, you don't have, you know, you just put to someone's forehead and it takes their temperature. And it's hard to find those and get them in quickly. And of course, this just came out on Wednesday. So we're gonna work with our businesses on this and we don't need them sending the plans into us, but if we were to get a complaint, we would call that business, we would find out what their plan is, and then we would help them stay in compliance. Just how we've been doing for the last few weeks with all the businesses that are, have been left open, the life-sustaining businesses. We work with them on their plans and help to make it better. Um, when it comes to masks, uh, if they can, if a person doesn't have a mask and they come to a life-sustaining business such as a pharmacy or a grocery store um, and they are not allowed in, the business has to provide a way for them to bring the product out to the individual outside of the store. So there's a lot of guidelines and I know businesses are concerned about how do they follow this. And again, we are there to help them, 451 or you can always email us at uh, eriecountypa.gov. And that's actually ECDH info at eriecountypa.gov. Talk Erie. Yes, I wanted to ask about this auction, this farm auction. Mm -hmm. uh, just, just get at it because uh, uh, was it an outside event? Uh, how did they get around the no gathering of more than 10? And uh, do you see that there might be a thread for some larger gatherings again uh, I, again i hate to go go back to it but the, our churches keep on asking about you know, when things will be lucid for them they are considered uh, uh essential i mean they're not even on the list mm -hmm. they didn't need a waiver yet they're not allowed to gather can you talk about this so with the farm auction again that was a waiver from the state um when we found out about it uh, i have to say we were a bit surprised uh, because of the number of people, you know, that we thought would be there. But again, I commend those who uh, got the waiver and ran that auction, uh, that they really did do it in an extremely responsible way from everything that my um, staff has reported back. And we had two enforcement teams that went out uh, this morning to make sure, but they had been having regular conversations with them over the last few days. So, you know, all of these closures, you have to remember, are being run by the state, and the state's deciding who can go forward and who can't. And honestly, with religious organizations, you know, I don't know that we could even um, constitutionally continue to say you absolutely cannot have services. From the beginning, we've asked them to not have services because we feel that it's extremely um, dangerous one of the things about having your church service is you're inside a building. One of the things about having a farm auction is you're out in the open air. And so even that risk is diminished when you're outside than when you're inside of a building. So, um, and we also know that uh, many, many church services uh, 
many of the people that come there are elderly. Not all, of course. We have young people in all sorts of ages that love to go and celebrate uh, their faith. But we also know that the elderly um, are very tied to their faith, too, and they are the most vulnerable. So we have just been grateful that the churches and the other religious institutions in our community have made the decision to not hold in-person services during this time. Do you think that uh, if a church came to you with a, a, a plan to, uh, you know, and try to work with your enforcement team on, you know, some mitigation circumstances that there would be the bandwidth to kind of work with them? Uh, I, again, most of the churches in, in this uh, county are under 50 people as it is, so. I'm not sure about your statistic there and if that's true, because I've talked to a number of pastors who, you know, have many more than 50 and, and they're concerned well, of course, yeah. with how they do that. So I'm not really sure that most of them are under 50. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, we're, we're always open to working with anybody, but I've talked to a number of church leaders and what they said, it's not worth it. It's not worth risking the lives of the people in their congregation um, during this particular time. And if anybody's, you know, concerned about the health and welfare of their people, it's usually pastors. Uh, and so that's why I think that uh, they are understanding of this and they know that this is the best thing to do going forward at this particular time. So again, if we can really all do our part and try to mitigate the spread, uh, continue to mitigate the spread here in Erie County, I'm hoping we can get to a point where our churches, um, sooner rather than later, will be able to get together. But I'm not recommending that right now. Um, and so that's, I don't really even want to encourage that that would happen because I think it could, it's just a disaster in the making if we start to see that happening a lot. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Jet TV? Yeah. So we obviously know uh, the state during their press conference. Uh, they've listed the number of like nurses or healthcare workers that have contracted COVID-19. Do we know if any in Erie County have? I don't know that. I don't know that specific. Okay. And then I want to speak a little bit about businesses and if someone were to test positive at, let's say like a store like Walmart, what would be the protocol? So what is the protocol if, I'm sorry, say that again? If an employee tests positive at like a superstore like Walmart. Um, would they be shut down, et cetera? So our protocol would be the same as it is for any person that we connect with. Um, where have you been in the last number of days? Who have you been in contact with? How long was that contact? How close was that contact? You know, that's what we do with that very um, detailed contact tracing that we are talking about. And um, it would depend on where our person worked within that store. Um, what their connection is with people coming in and out, what their connection is with their fellow workers, and all of those um, myriad of issues that we ask every person, whether they work in a store or whether they work in a larger factory or whether they work in a very small business with only a few people and a few people coming in. So it would be the same process. And then uh, decisions would be made as we would know the risk factors of that. So they wouldn't be mandated to shut down and do a quote unquote like deep clean? <laughs> Only if through our contact tracing work, it was determined that there was a huge risk to the general public. And then of course, at that point, that would definitely happen. Um, so that's the kind of work that the health department is doing every single day on every single case that comes in to determine if there is some greater threat to um, you know, the entire community. And if you remember, Has there been with a the one facility, case out I guess, of, like that? With the one case out in Wabtec, as you remember, um, even though the individual hadn't been there for a while, Wabtec chose to uh, send some people home for that long weekend. I, last weekend, actually, it was Easter weekend. And then they did a very deep cleaning of that entire building. Um, so that was actually, um, you know, a very smart and uh, prudent thing to do when they did that. Erie News Now? Oh, I'm sorry, Erie Times News? Yeah, I wanted to see if you could talk a little bit more about the probable cases and how the state is reporting those. You said there are two probable cases being reported now. 
are those newer <laughs> cases? Mm-hmm. Are they are they going back from day one? And I guess if they're not, has the county been tracking uh, probable cases, and what might that number look like? So this is the curious thing. Of course, it's Saturday when we see these probable cases sort of uh, show up on the numbers. Um, and we really had no idea that they were going to be added in. And this is what we think is happening because we have okay. 60, 56 cases and they're showing us a 58. And they had said earlier in the week that at some point they were going to add the probables in. And we have a handful of probables. So okay. that 50, we, we, I talked with my staff this morning. I'm like, I'm not even sure what to say uh, to the public today about this because we don't have all the information. So is the 58 include these handful of probables and maybe doesn't even include our three from today yet because the state pulls down their numbers at midnight. So I'm telling you being very honest that we're trying to work this out and figure it out. But to your part of your question, um, which is really important for people to know, these probables are from the last three and a half or so weeks since we reported our first case. So in the beginning, okay. in particular, testing was much more limited and, and, and much, more, uh, much less available than it is now. And so there was uh, less testing of those people who were living in the same house with somebody who then became sick with very uh, you know, symptoms that were probably COVID-19. So I'm going to hopefully have some better information for you early next week about these probable cases. And they may be people who have long uh, passed and gone into recovery. But being that it happened on a Saturday morning and the staff is a little more limited on the weekends, they were digging into this, plus taking care of our three new cases. Well, actually, they were taking care of our three new cases and not having the opportunity to kind of dig into that uh, probable case number. So it's it's a little bit of a mystery for us right now. We're trying to figure it out. So we want our men, our numbers, obviously, to align with the state. But if you've been listening to me on a daily basis, you often know that our numbers are a bit higher than the state because we get, num- we get those cases in sometimes early in the morning and even up to uh, the time I come on the air and then I, I report them, but the state only pulls the numbers off of that NEDS database at midnight and then they don't add beyond that until the next day. So just, I guess, a lot of information, maybe more than people need to hear, but trying to give people some context around this. Okay, and one other question mm-hmm. for you. Uh, I know in the seven uh, new cases from Friday, uh, there were three that were still under investigation can you tell us a little bit more if, uh, you know, if the health department has made any um, progress uh, of determining how those three people uh, contracted COVID-19? Um, I don't have any further information. I'm not sure. They may just be more of um, community, you know, acquired cases okay. uh, is what I'm understanding at this point. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, Erie News now. Hi, Kathy. For for people who might not have the tools to sort of make a mask at home and have tried to find some uh, at different stores in the area, what would you sort of recommend? Are there any sort of efforts to sort of, um, you know, put together masks that people can purchase or anything like that in the county? Or uh, what would you sort of recommend for people who are looking for masks right now? So we are trying to uh, find more um entities that can manufacture masks in our own community and we're actually working with a few now to see if we can actually get waivers and get a few businesses open that uh, could help sew masks uh, in a greater quantity and have them available for people to purchase. But um, I guess I would say if there's any house in Erie County that doesn't have a t-shirt and a pair of scissors, that's all this mask took. And so I would think that most houses, um, you know, most of us have a t-shirt somewhere that was you know, given to us or we found or we like t-shirts and we wear them and we have some that maybe we don't need anymore. That's all this took was a pair of scissors and a t-shirt. Um, and it's really any, anything that you can put over your face. There's another mask that is a piece of material and a couple rubber bands. So very, very simple, no sew uh, way to make a mask. You have a scarf. You can wrap it around your nose and your mouth, any kind of a scarf. 
any barrier. Um, some people have those neck warmers, you know, um, they take those and then they pull it up over their mouth and their nose when they're out. A bandana, some people don't like wearing bandanas because maybe they feel like it looks too much like um, the movies, you know, and a, and a bandit. But all of those are acceptable things, anything that's a barrier. So you don't need to go out and purchase a fancy mask. But if you want to, there are people who are selling them and um, you can get some, you know, you can uh, fancy it up, I guess, a bit. But you really don't need to do anything uh, drastic, a t-shirt and a pair of scissors and cut out that. And the directions for how to do that, you can find them right on our website, eriecountypa.gov, as well as the one that you can make with a couple of rubber bands and some material, as well as ones that have um, more intricate but not difficult sewing uh, that would be required. Talk, Erie, do you have any last questions? Really quick, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, just wondering, uh, they're, they're setting up a new mass testing area at Mohican Sun uh, in the Northeast. Uh, we have plenty of uh, testing capacity here uh, in uh, Erie County. Do you anticipate the health department requesting from the Secretary of Health maybe loosening up some of the guidelines so that at least symptomatic people could get a test uh, like they're doing at the Mohican Sun where you don't even need to go through a PCP, but if you have symptoms, you just sign up online, uh, or maybe it would be something that's within network and you would go. Uh, right now, the, even the doctors are super limited on who they could send to get a test because they have to have connection to a known positive or it be in healthcare or so on. What do you think about all that? Well, of course, where the Mohican Sun is in the northeast part of uh, Pennsylvania, I think is the one you're mentioning about, right? I think it's in the right. north. Uh, if you look at the numbers of that county and the counties around it, the numbers are in the hundreds and hundreds of people who have been infected and the deaths, uh, many deaths, and of course we've had no deaths here in Erie County. So the situation there is a much different situation. They have huge community spread going on there. We have some community spread but we think it's very limited at this point still. Um, so to that point, you know, I don't foresee this happening anytime in the near future in Erie County, but again, I could go for a test today and um, I'm asymptomatic, right? And, and I would test negative and, and then maybe tomorrow or the next day I could start to have symptoms and, and then I've just tested negative from today, but I could have symptoms that didn't start until tomorrow or the next day. You have to have a certain viral load to be able to actually even test positive. So there's been, been some tests that are negative and then people do end up being COVID positive. So um, again, without the huge numbers here that we see in other places like in the Northeast and or, yeah, the Northeast and the Southeast part of the state, I don't, I don't see that happening anytime soon, and I don't see the value in that. I think the value would really come if there was a test that would show which of the which of us are part of that 25% who are um, asymptomatic, but maybe we had it, and now we know we we won't get it again because we already had it. If there's a way, there's going to be hopefully a test at uh, some point that will allow us to see that. And then we do know if we could have mass testing, we could find those 25% of the people who are asymptomatic. But um, that's a lot of testing, and there's just not that much testing available yet. There's not that many uh, test kits out there. And uh, not a quick testing. As I said, some of the times the tests come back in less than 24 hours, and sometimes it takes us four or five days to get a test back. So it's really still an issue on the testing side, and that's really the federal government that has to come through and find the way to get us more tests, more accurate tests, and, uh, and just have a number of test kits available that we could do that type of action across the whole country. Jet team. But you would say that anybody who is symptomatic should be able to get a test through their PCP. And right? I haven't heard of anyone at this point who cannot get a test if they are symptomatic. So I have been told by all of those doing the testing, and of course they were even on with us here a couple days ago, they said there is no issue with getting a test at this particular time in Erie County. So if you are a person who's symptomatic and you have been told by your PCP that you cannot have a test, um, you should question that. And uh, everyone here who is symptomatic should be able to get a test. Jet TV, Thanks. do you have any final questions? 
My last one, do you have the zones uh, that these three new cases live in? I do not, and um, when we put up the map, we said we weren't going to do the zones on the weekend, and, and um, I do not have the zones yet. Again, these came in, they actually came in kind of late this morning, so um, I don't have that information for you. Erie okay. Times News? Yeah, just the, uh, do you know what the uh, number of negative tests are up to right now? Yes, uh, we have 1,271 negatives in Erie County at this point. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh -huh. Erie News Now, do you have any final questions? Uh, just one last one. How optimistic are you about you know Erie County opening back up uh, earlier in the state because of some of our lower numbers compared to the rest of the state? So if you go on um, health.pa.gov uh, and look at their numbers, and they have a county by county uh, numbers, and you just keep scrolling down on um, all of that information, they have an interesting graph that shows the cases by, I think there's six different geographical areas. So they have the northeast, the southeast, um, east central, um, south central, or I'm sorry, north central, south central, and then northwest, southwest. And when you see our, our graph in terms of the northwest, we are very low and fairly flat compared to many of those other areas. And that's what gives me some hope that we, if we can continue to keep our numbers low and we can continue to show that our businesses are really great at complying and that people in our community are really great at complying with the new guidance out, that then we would be looked at as a place as the state is offering support and help for us to reopen, that, they, that we would be one of those areas they would look at to be one of the early early ones. So it's really going to all depend on how well we all do collectively, businesses and individuals alike. Thank you. Well, thank you all for being with me here on this beautiful sunny uh, Saturday here in Erie County. And um, I will not be with you tomorrow on Sunday, but we will be back on Monday with more information about COVID-19 pandemic here in Erie County. So in the meantime, please stay home. Please stay safe and please stay calm. Thank you.